gosh, we made some homemade yogurt, boom, in the Instant Pot. So come check it out. So why would you even want to make your own homemade yogurt? For, uh, for starters, it's super easy, especially in the Instant Pot. But even if you don't have an Instant Pot, it's super easy. Second of all, look at all the ingredients on this store-bought yogurt here. I mean, all this stuff right here. I mean, it should say milk and live culture. Granted, this particular yogurt also has fruit in it. This is a store-bought one. But keep in mind that this yogurt does also say in fine print right down here somewhere. Jenny had to point it out for me. It does say it contains a live culture. So speaking of cultures, you need a yogurt culture in order to create the yogurt. So you can get that in many different ways. One, you can get some plain store-bought yogurt, or hopefully you just have some left over. That would have been my choice to use in this video, but we didn't have any. Uh, second, you could use leftover yogurt from your homemade yogurt. Or third, you can use uh, a store-bought uh, live culture. This particular culture from getculture.com this particular culture is a non-dairy culture, meaning when Andrew was still allergic to milk, we got this and we made yogurt out of, oh, I forget how we even did it, but almond milk and everything else. And this culture contains no dairy. If I remember from the directions correctly, this you can use this in dairy and non-dairy yogurt. So if you're going to be using store-bought yogurt, you need to make sure that it says that contains live culture on the package, all right? If you're using, so store-bought or your homemade yogurt, you would use about three to four tablespoons. Four tablespoons is a quarter of a cup uh, per half gallon or so. I don't think you would want to use a full half a cup for a full gallon of milk, but, but maybe a little bit more. And this culture says, this one is a quarter teaspoon per up to two gallons. So we will be making a gallon of milk and using a quarter teaspoon okay so an article i was reading on the kitchen.com says you can use any kind of milk really uh whole two percent whatever uh skim milk whatever except you just want to make sure that it's not ultra high pasteurized i believe is the term it's going to be pasteurized milk that you buy obviously but not ultra high temperature pasteurized also, in my book, Wild Fermentation, they have an awesome section on yogurt all alone that you should really go read. I'll leave a link below. Okay, once we have the milk on, we're gonna put the lid on. We're gonna close the steam valve. Uh, per some instructions I read online, I really don't remember. And then, we're just gonna hit the yogurt button and bring it and set it to boil. And it's gonna set. There we go, it beeped, it's good to go. It's done. Now this boil setting, I don't think this milk actually boils, but I do think it gets up to 180, which is what is usually recommended for getting milk up to, I believe, 180 to kill everything in there in order for the yogurt to grow. So there we are, 180. Going just a hair over. Oh, we're still going up. Okay, we're gonna closely monitor this. We're gonna cool this off to the 120 range. We want between one, I think it's 110 and 120. In order to add our, oh, got a lot of steam coming. In order to add our uh, culture, so I got it sitting on a bed of ice. I could pack ice in around the side to really speed it up, but we're already down to 165. So I'm just gonna keep doing this, keeping an eye on it. Okay, the main pot is still way too hot. This is down to 113 which should be perfect for adding our culture and just getting it whisked whisk together. And then we'll take this, once we put the pot back in the instant pot, then we will take this and stir it in. So let's do that. This is gonna sit here. This is just to get it stirred in nice and easily and get it dissolved so that you can easily incorporate it into the bigger pot. Um, 
When that's cooled down, we'll do that. We're down to 120, it looks like, right now. So we are almost ready to rock and roll on this. 115, as you can see. Just going to go ahead and dump this in. I'm going to go ahead and mix it right here. No need for this to be in here any longer. I'm going to go ahead and stir this really good. Get it all mixed around in there. My beautiful wife over there making pork tacos yells at me because I call it an Instapot. Instant pot. <laughs> Let's get this in the instant pot. <laughs> Alright, as you can tell, my wife is videoing for me. I'm going to put this lid back on. Instructions I have read that are not from Instant Pot, just on the internet, said you can now either seal this or leave it open. Same results, doesn't matter. We're going to go to the yogurt button and we are going to keep pressing it until we get to normal heat for eight hours. I'm going to leave it at eight hours, I think. Um, I probably want it to go longer. I, I probably want it to go for 10 hours. Um, but when it's done in eight hours, I can reset it for another two. All right, there we go. Keep in mind, your homemade yogurt will more than likely be quite a bit runnier than your store-bought yogurt. Uh, in a little bit here, we'll show you how you can thicken it up, but this is without adding anything. Your store-bought yogurt will have some thickeners and stuff in it. You can actually add thickeners to your homemade yogurt to make it thicker, but we'll show you another way to do that as well. All right, so we've got some of our homemade, home canned spiced apples, and we're just going to add it into here. The kids are going to love this. All right, Grace is coming in for a taste test. Homemade yogurt, homemade <laughs> spiced apples combined together for a whole bunch of goodness. <laughs> Let's see, darling, go ahead and get some. Come on. Hey, can you get that apple? Next, coming in for the taste test, we got Andrew. Hey, can you smile real quick? Are you sure you're gonna be able to eat that with no teeth or hold it in your mouth with no teeth? Mm -hmm. All right, let's see. Look at that. Is that good? Is it good with a spiced apple? Mm -hmm. Now, we've done homemade yogurt before. And what's some other stuff that you like to put in there besides spiced apples? Do you remember? Because it's been a while since we've done Cinnamon. Made. You guys do like a lot of cinnamon. Uh, we've, I think Honey. we've done. Oh yeah, we do do a lot of honey in there, and um, uh, I can't think of anything else. Some fruit, but we've also done strawberry jam, mom's strawberry jam. Thanks, bud. Next up, we got Faith. What do you think? Wait, real quick. Do you think you're gonna like it? Yeah. You do for real? Yeah. For real? Yeah. All right. For reals? Yeah. Good. Now be honest. Now, you kids really didn't care for the plain yogurt by itself plain. No. 
It was a little was it a little tart or sour or something or kind of tart. Okay. But mixing stuff in, you guys like it? Mm-hmm. Okay. And you can achieve different tartness and flavors by doing multiple things uh including the, even the uh the oh including even the culture that you use can can affect the flavor so uh okay cool okay so something else you can do to thicken up your yogurt is strain it uh for two hours overnight however long you want and it'll thicken up like a like a um like a greek style yogurt depending on how long you strain it for so i am I'll end up getting a spatula and cleaning all that out, but I am going to probably let this, you can already see liquid coming out. All right, so this has been in here for a couple hours, straining. We're going to go ahead and take it out. Uh, some people leave it overnight, get it super thick. I just want to see what this is now, but you can see it's up to there. That's a that's quite a bit of liquid. Now this, um, this way people use for livestock, they use in their gardens, they use it in baking. They'll put the whey in bread instead of water, which is a fantastic idea, especially since I'm getting ready to make some sourdough bread. Um, so I'll have to maybe figure out something to do with that. But right now, we're after yogurt. All right, so let's dump this off. That's quite a bit. This is off of, that's off a quart of yogurt. We're now minus a cup of liquid. So in my mind, this should be three quarters of a quart. What do you think, Jenny? And look, you would think the math is like it that. is quite a bit thicker, quite a bit thicker. Let's. Uh, I don't know if this is necessary. I don't know the best way to go about this. Oh boy, this is up on the edge. There we go. It's almost like scooping ice cream. It is. Okay, I think I'm at a point. And because I don't want to waste any of my efforts, there we go. There's quite a bit getting wasted. So that was a full quart of yogurt is now with one cup of whey coming out of it is now not even half a quart. Yeah, maybe, that, maybe only half. Maybe a half. Okay, and let's taste it. Now I think that's really good, and that texture is what I like a whole lot more than the runnier stuff. All right, easy peasy. Instant pot yogurt. The whole process is super simple, even though this is a little bit longer video than I anticipated making. I thought this would be a super short video, but the process is super easy, very non-time consuming. If you have any questions, feel free to ask. You could always join our Facebook group, Pratt Pack, where there's a ton of knowledgeable people in there that if I don't have an answer, I'm sure they will. So thanks for hanging out and watching yogurt.